Greetings to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. My name is Raymond Harris. I will be your host. I also play the character of William Stable, Pastor William Stable, on Gospel Hill, the radio soap opera. Tonight, we're here to visit the play of I Want, I'm Going to Learn How to Read and Write. This antidote tells of a torture that many had to go through just to learn how to read and write. Now, our narrator and our performer, the older Frida, Dr. Rosalind Guyton, she's telling a story about her own mother, Billie Jean. Now, Billie Jean, see, she had her eyes burned out by her own master because he caught her reading. And afterwards, he raped her and he impregnated her. But that did not stop her. Believing by her own sacrifices that she and her daughter would one day be free. Although Billie Jean was blind, that didn't stop her. Because she was blind, she was more eager to learn and to teach through her own daughter, Frida. Now, as a grandmother, she dared not not tell her granddaughter about her own mother in spite of the atrocious cost of just seeking knowledge that she conquered her freedom by the power of knowledge. Now, now that we know that knowledge is power, That means that we will never ever be enslaved again. You see, it is my prayer that we come to appreciate those that lived as people of power and who died as people of power. So I'm going to say this again. Now that we know that knowledge is power, we will never ever be enslaved again. Now true of the Lord, true is the word of the Lord. That my people are destroyed from the lack of knowledge. So Zaya chapter 4, verse 6. With all the love of God and with the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I ask you to open your minds and open your hearts. And we're going to take a step back in time and eyes going to learn how to read and write. This world troubles over this world Just as powerful as they did. Oh, but they wouldn't go 
you know, peel clean with that little white girl, master little white girl, pay pay school. My mama had, oh, my mama was bold. <laughs> she had a nerve enough to ask that white girl to teach her how to read and write. Mm -mm. And mama said, that white girl starts shaking it up and then up. You know you niggas can't read and write. Papa saying to teach a nigga how to read and write is just a waste of time. You niggas too dumb to learn things like that. My papa say all you niggas are good for is having them babies and working them fields. My mama said she just bowed her head. But well, she asked the little white girl to teach her anything. So, Grandma, did the little white girl teach Grand Granny how to write and read? Oh, yeah. I'm ready to tie <laughs> But yes, she did. And I tell you, boy, my mama learned fast and she learned really well. My mama learned so, she was so smart that she learned just how to read everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, baby. I tell you. And, you know, then my mom was out there in the field. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had a book called Cinderella. Oh, she loved that book. She would always dream that someday, hmm, that night on that, 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 that night on that white horse would come and set her free. That ain't never happened. Not in that her time. But then, you know, she only had a few more pages left in that book. Oh, goodness. She couldn't wait till the night time. Because if she did, the night might catch see the light. And catch a read. Well. It's just a chance she could not take. And well, nobody knew she could read until that tale, that tale would day. So, Grandma, what happened on that day? Well, like I said, she was out there in the field. She had only a few more pages left. Oh, good, it made me so tired. Nobody knows the trouble that I've seen. Nobody knows the Jesus. Hello. My name is Lydia. This is my story. I was born June 1829. It didn't matter much for anybody to remember the day. So I chose the third because it represents the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is the life I survived. I never had a family. Maybe a family just never had me. I'm what most called in those days a housemaid. That means I had a black slave mother and a white master father. Yes, when I was born, they took me to the big house. I lived under the roof with my dad, but I was never his daughter. I was nobody's daughter. When I wasn't on my back, making money, I was on my knees, scrubbing floors, cooking, cleaning, doing the chores. That's all I was good for. I was a slave in more ways than one. When it was supper time, there was no place for me at anybody's table. I got the crumbs, the leftovers. When my white siblings would talk to 
read and write. I was forced to leave the house. I would go out to the field to play with my black siblings. They didn't want to have anything to do with me. I would hear him say, who does she think she is? Walking like the whites, talking like the whites. She thinks she white. She thinks she better than us. She ain't nobody. They were right. I was nobody. Because I had nobody. A mother that was ashamed of me. A father that never claimed me. Sisters and brothers that hated me. Were they jealous of me? Of my life? What life? It was a living hell. I just wanted to love somebody. I just wanted somebody to love me. I couldn't have been more alone. No, nobody knows. The trauma I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow. Nobody knows the trauma I've seen. Nobody knows the Jesus.
to the light when my Stop my mother from breastfeeding. 
see my little sister. And she only was able to feed the master's child. Said she was at, all the way to age three years old. Then as my little sister got older, they made her sleep with a lot of men. They made her do horrible things. But she looked like she was so happy. And my mom would always, always give excuses for my sister. She'll tell me that she was a slave like me. I didn't believe that. Because I used to see her outside dancing and playing, laughing, in her pretty dresses, pretty dress, hairdresses. She looked like she was happy. And she wasn't a slave to me. But one day I seen her on the porch. She looked just so unhappy. But I still didn't believe that she was a slave. Until one day I seen her in the backyard hanging clothes. And I asked her, why are you hanging clothes? She said, because she's a slave like me. I couldn't play with her and she couldn't play with me. But I still believe she wasn't a slave. Because I was the one outside in those fields from sun up to sun down. I didn't have a father. I didn't have sisters. I didn't have brothers. I had no one. No one to love me. My love. My love. Oscar.
see what they took my mama. They beat her. Then they tied her to a tree. And Master John, Master Bob, took a hot iron. Master John, he raped your mother? Yes. How did that happen? But I suppose you all have to understand. It is about five months after they burned my mama's eyes out. My mama said she was laying in the bed. Everybody else was out there in the fields working. She heard somebody come in there. She didn't know who it was at first. But she heard him say, I know what's going to make you well, gal. Mama said, Master John pulled the covers off her and had his way with her. Then he tells her, she better not tell nobody. But everybody knew. Everybody knew what it did to my mama. And my mama, when she found out she was going to have me, she started living again. She lived for the day. And we were going to be free. Yeah. As soon as I was, I could understand, my mama took me and she would make letters in the dirt and tell me what they was. And then I'd spell the word for her. And she told me what that word was. And then one day my mama comes to me. In this right city, which I know, I'm going there to see my dear mother. I'm going there, no more to roam. I'm going up to Jordan. I'm just a going, going home. Yes, sir. I 
Hello. And my name is Oscar. Oh, well, here's my story. I was born in 1831. Don't know the month. But I celebrated in the month of December. I was been sold four times. I was taken away from my mammy when I was only 12 years old. I never knew my pappy because he was so just like me. Now I was known just, just like other, many other male slaves as what they called studs. Master took the healthy males and females and forced sexual relations. This was to ensure a productive crop of slaves. And to ensure that they would always have the small workers. And less need to purchase more slaves. So not only do we make them money, but we also save them money. Now they tell me, they tell me that they have a big family. But I never met them. Well, you see, I never was even allowed to marry. And the woman that I was in relationship with, when she sees the back channels, I was either sold or forced to live with another that could back channels. And I, of course, my older brothers hated me. But when they no longer could reduce, master forced me to live with their woman. And the only woman that I ever loved I could not have because she could not produce children. So you see, for me, love was going to be I had no ones, I had no children, I had no more. My name is Oscar, and this is my story. I'm just a poor pilgrim of sorrow, traveling through. Come here, child. Now you know that all your life I've been telling you that someday you were going to be free. Yes, Mama. Well, that day has come. It means time for you to be leaving soon. Oh, Mama, when are we leaving? I'm not going with you. I'm going to stay here for now. I can't, I can't Mama. Shh. Now you ain't got much time. Now you must listen. And listen carefully. Mary Jo. And they may come. 
call you a nigga. But you's be free. You's be free. You's be free. To see. And I learned. I learned all. And I didn't quit. Because I knew what it was like to be a slave. And I swore that nobody would ever have that power over me again. It was hard, but I did it. So, Grandma, if Great Granny didn't tell anyone who taught her how to write and read, how did you find out? <laughs> well, she told me, but she never told anybody else. <laughs> Not even her own mother.
And if she told you anything, I would pay. <laughs> Girl, your mammy died about three years ago. So you might as well just go. Once I had a dream that someday someone would come and set me free. Then too, like the whites, I could write and read. For they had the power, and education is the key. For so many nights I would, I would hear my mother's cries. Because one day Master came, caught her reading, and burned out her eyes. And then he tells her, now, nigga, let me see you read. Use a nigga, and you'll be a slave all your life, and you'll never be free. Then, one day, my mama comes to me and says, I was going to teach you how to read and write. So not like me, they may cause you a nigga, but you'll be free. Remember, knowledge is power, and education is the key. And without it, you'll always be a slave. And not even your money can set you free. So I learned to read and write. Because I refuse to be a slave, a nigga, all my life. Well, mama, you're free. So am I. Oh, oh, freedom. Oh, oh, freedom. Oh, oh, freedom over me. And before I be a slave, 
And before you sleep. And before.